Welcome to the WOM. So last night my fiance came up to me because she bought this uh, jewelry box and she wanted to engrave something on the top. So that sparked the idea of having this video where I walk you through, you go find your picture online, use two free pieces of software, and you're able to go from picture to machine product. Check this out. So hopefully at the end of this, we'll be able to machine something like this. So here we go. First, let's go to Google. I already have the picture pulled up. Your snipping tool. New. Save as. And as you can see, there's one in here because I had to get a new uh, screen capture software for the computer. So we'll call this one Flower. All right, so once you have the picture you want on the box, Inkscape. So you can, I think it's inkscape.org or inkscape.com. You go there and download it, it's free. You can pitch in and help out if you want. But this software handles the legwork from going from, say, a JPEG image to a vectored piece of graphics or art. And a vectored piece of graphics or art is, uh, you ever, you ever get a picture that, and you want to expand it and you try and expand it and it gets all pixelated? Well, if you were to turn the image into a vector beforehand, that is uh, limitless, inf inf infinitely limitless. So anyways, uh, we'll import our picture. Uh, libraries, pictures. Oh, let me just remember where I put it. It's a flower. Okay. Center it in here. And then right away, it's easy. Go up to path. Trace bitmap. All right. And you want to click on the lab preview so you can see what's going on. But the only thing you really have to worry about on here is see when you increase or decrease the brightness cutoff threshold. You want to get something that looks relatively clean Say about like that, um, and it and it'll differ from picture to picture, but we'll hit OK, exit out of here. All right. So what that does, it'll give you two items, <clears throat> and then to tell which item you need, you double click. Okay, and here you see that um, um, all these little dots in here are nodes. And once you get it to the nodes, this is what we're going after, the vector. You can move them, warp them, whatever you want to do with them. So that's the one we want. Get this one out here, delete. I won't go up to select. Select your item, delete. Get this relatively centered again. All right, so now file. Um, we want to save as. So we can save it as a SVG. So load pictures. Drawing SVG. We'll just rename it as flower. SVG. Now that that's saved, load up Fusion. Fusion is also a uh, free software and there is a huge community be behind fusion with fusion it lets people like me do awesome things uh, it's a full-blown CAD CAM software um, you can do finite element analysis thermal dynamics um, <clears throat> that's got uh, sheet metal uh, now that we're here the we model stuff patch environment. Uh, I, won't, I won't go into what all these do. There's so many videos. I'll keep this concise. But okay, so to start off, we'll start a sketch. Actually, before before we start a sketch, let's uh, 
make a new component. Now that we're in the new component, let's make a sketch. Take the four. Set a rectangle. And let's say the box is going to be five inches. So enter five tab and by eight inches. Okay, so we have this uh, extrude. Uh, you want to do the thickness of your board, so let's just say this one is an eighth of an inch. Uh, 3.125 for the metric community. So once we have the surface of our box, we go over here to insert, insert SVG, click the surface we want to insert it on, and then we'll click for the file, um, which is choose flower. All right. So while <clears throat> while it's here, so these are the arrows where you can move your move your uh, object around. There's also on this, you grab it, you can uh, scale it up down. It's actually quite intuitive, and with all the all the different people making these videos, it is absolutely awesome. Um, Check it out. There's Lars Christensen. There's NYC CNC, and then uh, Titans of CNC. Boom! All right. So we got our SVG on the surface. So um, to make the relief, so the tool will know where to cut. We'll come in here to or uh, modify, press pull, select all the pieces that we want machined out. All right, so, and then it's asking us how deep, and with the arrow, we want it to go down into it, so we'll say negative 0 0.06. Our image is cut. Okay, and we got it relatively centered on the box. So now, we go from the model environment to the manufacturer environment. And here, just like setting up on a mill, we got to come up to the top and just like set up in a mill, we have to set up and orient our part for the CNC. So as you can see, we got three arrows on there, the X, Y, and Z. We need to correct that because that's not how it's going to fit in the machine. So come over to change it. I always go here and select the Z axis plane and the X axis. And the cool part about Fusion is if you hover like I'm doing right now over any of the options, It'll usually give you an awesome description. So first is Z-axis. Click the Z-axis. And then the X-axis. So right in front of me, uh, my little tiny CNC will do about 7 inches by 11 inches. So I'm going to have to put it oriented this way in my machine as I'm staring at it straight on. So this will be my X. Center, center, and then uh, uh, right now it's saying the stock box point. I look on it straight on. You can see that there's stock sitting up at the top. So uh, where the box is already done, we just need to cut it. There's no extra material at the top or on the sides here. So we'll go over to the stock tab and turn down the top and the side stock. You can go over to, to the post processor here. And that's usually the flow I found on Fusion 360 is when you select something, just go through the tabs. Um, when you're machining tool paths, though, uh, a lot of times you like to click the path and uh, select your the contour that you want the tool to stay in or stay out of, and then just hit OK and see what you get and adjust from there, like your step overs and your depth of cut. Um, but the uh, post process here, you can start the start the name. Uh, so if you end up with more more uh, machining steps, you can uh, add like a one or a two or three after it is what I usually do. So this one we're just going to call flower. All right, we have our stock set up. 
Um, the cool part about engraving is it's you. It's a pretty, pretty straightforward, especially on this that you could end up with a bunch of three D stuff. And I leave this on three D anyways because three D toolpaths actually recognize the body, um, where the two D toolpaths uh, will usually hold itself to a, a line or a point or a contour that you set for it. So I use three D parallel. My tool that I have, I will. I have a, a basically a one thousandth tip, thirty degree tapered uh, V bit. Um, it's actually go in there. So if you want to use my speeds and feeds for your little CNC thirty twenty, I got it down pretty good. Um, spindle speed ten thousand, cutting feed rate a hundred inches a minute. Um, the the cool part about fusion is if like up here at the the Cutting feed rate, you enter that, and these usually follow suit. Um, the thing you want to keep your eye out for, though, is the ramp feed rate. As it's uh, ramping, uh, basically like a helical ramp, it'll spin and circle bigger than the tool and, and, and descend on the Z-axis to cut into a part. And that's a, a speed you want to pay attention to, especially if you're getting into metals and how many flutes you have and stuff. And then plunge feed is, is more of a drill bit type uh, feed rate um, so and then here's the cutter I use or my setup for it one fluid I just use the tapered and pretend it's a ball nose so if you need to you can pause this and copy that but okay that's the tool I'm gonna use pops in here geometry um, I, I go into selection so I know know what I'm selecting and then tool center on boundary. This is one of those things where um, you definitely, as, as a beginner, wanna go in and check all these out so you get a better understanding. So machining boundaries, I'll come in here and no real reason, I just select the bottom contours of all these little cutouts. So actually, I'm gonna fast forward the video until until I'm done clicking. All right, now that I have all my all my shapes clicked. Ooh, missed one. All right, so most of this stuff, um, you don't really need to pay attention to on this tool path. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. It follows the body in a horizontal pattern. Um, and my step over is about a thou and a half. But one thing on this tool path where it says contact only here, usually have to check this off because if you see on the on the left side I can't move my mouse on the left side the enabled which it is now see how it doesn't touch the what would be the face of the inside of the pedals or the bubbles on our cutting there you definitely want to disable it so you get a clean surface on the bottom And we need to set how deep our tool has to go, and Fusion's pretty intuitive. So you come down to your bottom height, selection, I'll just select the bottom of one of those, good to go. Passes, tolerance, this thing isn't, we're not making a rocket part, so I even, two thousands is, is fine. You, we, you or I wouldn't be, even be able to notice. Direction, both ways is fine, step over a thousandth and a half. There's no, uh, stock to leave we'll put on smoothing though to uh make our tool path less jaggedy and it's better on the machine uh, i'll go half of the two thousands and make it one linking full retraction um so right now i'm gonna put a picture on so you can see uh this is the my fault when my fiance and i were working on on her uh, jewelry box last night you can see these little scratch marks on the surface um, this I believe because instead of having the full retraction on uh, the linking tool pass I put minimum retraction so for this one we'll leave it on full retraction safe distance I think we're good to go hit okay and let it calculate itself out you'll see the tool pop up into your screen. There we go. Cool part about Fusion 2, if you right click on your processes here, you can, uh, this is where you click to 
uh, eventually submit your G-code to a floppy drive and bring it to your machine, but you can simulate uh, your tool pass and your machining time is also handy. So I'll simulate simulate for for all intents and purposes. So here I usually just go with the flute so the holder doesn't get away in my, in my way of the view. Uh, tail, because I don't want to see the whole path. I want to actually see the material removed and leave the stock on. Play. You can see that everything's moving along the x-axis because we have our piece in the machine this orientation. And speed up. Awesome, looks great. So now I will save this and send it over to the machine. Well, we get, we, let's actually walk through that real quick. Right click, post process. I've for some reason had that keep popping up, but I click yes and it turns into my Mach 3 mill. Mach 3 is another software that's pretty in depth um, uh, that there's tons and tons of information for, but you make sure when you go through here, if you have fourth access stuff, you need turned on or clearances and stuff like that. But for most, most all intents and purposes, click post. And after it's done posting or saving to your computer, it'll pop up with the G code that you can edit here and whatnot. But I usually just exit out of here and go over to uh, my CNC. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the uh, comment section below. Other than that, check the description. Have a good day.